to know is that it's this thing we practiced yesterday night, and I'm going to do it again this morning. Okay? So, those who respond, then I know that yes, they were here yesterday. Praise the Lord! Our response is hallelujah for those who are not here, okay? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Well, I'm going to do that again like this. You'll have to wave your hands, okay?
O God, who on this day, through your only benevolent Son, have conquered death and the Lord for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may show the renewal brought by your Spirit, raise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. President. Who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
Christians to the pastoral victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb to sheep redeemed, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. That the life have contended and that combat stupendous. The press of life who died reigned the model. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw when in Mary. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen, to gather thee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtained. Have mercy, victor king, ever reign. Amen. Hallelujah. Yet understand the scripture 
that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is good. We thank God once again for another glorious day. It is indeed a glorious day, a day we rejoice and we celebrate. Because our Lord Jesus rose triumphantly from the dead. Our Lord Jesus rose victorious from death. Sin and death had no power over Jesus. He came into this world to die for our sins. He came so that we too can be united with God, so that we can be restored into friendship, so that we can be restored into a being that is perfect the way God created us at the beginning of time. And so today we rejoice and we are glad because our Lord Jesus has given us power to be victorious over sin and death. It means that our death is no longer in vain, but that we die in order to be united with Jesus. There is a little joke about Easter Sunday. I'm just going to share this brief joke with us. It has to do with a teacher who went, uh, who teaches in the school, and while he was in class, he had a question to the children. He said, What do you think the first word of Jesus was after he rose from the dead? And a little girl stood up to reply. And the girl said, Jesus would have said the first time he got up from the dead and saw his disciple that the first word of Jesus would have been Tana. <laughs> Tana, you know me. And everybody just laughed at this oh yeah. And another person got up and said, the first word of Jesus would have been to his disciples. Hey, why are you staring at me like that? You have some fish you have been I've been dead for three days. <laughs> and they all laughed at this. And the teacher then asked another question. He said, Why do you think that Jesus appeared to the women first? Then the teacher got up and said, Oh, Jesus wanted the news to spread faster. That was how he appeared to the women first. Today, if you listen to the gospel, the women were the first to see Jesus. Because you know, it is a natural thing for women to be caring. Yes, well, I'm a man, and we would actually testify to the fact that men are not caring as much as the women. It's not the case that men are not caring. They have, but the women take it to an extra level. You know, at times I can go one month without talking to my brothers. But my mom, if I don't talk to her in two days, she will call me. She will be like, what's going on? But me and my brothers would go one month, about two months, we don't even talk to each other. But we know that we are fine, everybody is fine, everybody is doing well. But the lady is no. They will hardly go to days or three days. And so it was in that kind of desire of caring about Jesus that Mary Magdalene woke up with some other women early on the Sunday morning and said, They have buried their masters in Friday. Let us go and check it out. They would not go there on a Saturday because it was the Jewish day of Passover and they were not allowed to go to the tomb. So after this one full day, very early on Sunday morning, they are like, hey, we have to get to the tomb very fast. Let us go and anoint the body again. Let us put some new flowers there. Let us do something just to make his body to still be fresh because they really care about Jesus. And so they got there very early that morning, uh, that Sunday morning, only to find out that the person they buried on the Friday was not there. And so they were more afraid. They were like, what happened? This was someone that was buried on Friday. Where did they take his body to? It was inside that fear that they went to the disciples. They went to go and tell Peter, because Peter was the head of the apostles. We can't see the body of our Lord. We don't know where they are taking him to. That was their worry, that was their concern. 
and the things that he prepared was also a prayer that where he is in the body too. And what happened? We were told that Peter and John, they ran to the tomb where Jesus was buried. Of course, Peter was old, but John was younger. And so both of them ran, but John ran faster and got to the tomb first. But John could not enter the tomb because he was afraid. But Peter, being an old man, when he got there, he was not afraid. They said that an old person is not afraid of anything again. What would the old person be afraid of? He has seen everything. So he got to the tomb and he did, but he went straight into the tomb. Let me see for myself what is going on. And they went in and they saw that everything had been arranged. And after he went in, then John had followed him. And they now saw that he is no longer there. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them at that very moment, telling them that, hey, this man that was buried on Friday as he was, has been raised up from the dead. And that was when they began to understand when Jesus was telling them that after three days, he's going to do what? He is going to rise from the dead. And so, what we celebrate today on the Easter Sunday is we celebrate the triumph over sin and death. That is what we celebrate. That is the meaning of Easter. It is the triumph of Jesus over sin and death. You know, when God created Adam and Eve, He created them for perfection. He created them so that they can dwell and live with Him forever and ever. He didn't create them so that they can fall, so that they can sin. No. But after creation, sin came. And the very moment Adam and Eve sinned, then they became imperfect. The very moment they sinned, they then death came into the world. The very moment they sinned, they lost that grace of friendship with God. And that was the same thing that affected everybody that is born of a woman, even you and I. And that is why we had to go through the process of baptism, so that our original sin, the sin of Adam and Eve, can be washed away. So we lost that perfection the very moment sin came into the world. And God, in His loving kindness, was like, how can I restore these people back to myself? He considered so many ways. He sent prophets, he sent judges, he sent kings, he sent different people to do what? To talk to his people. But he realized that this was not enough to restore the work of my creation back to myself. And what did he do? We were told that at the fullness of time, God sent his only begotten son not to come and eat steak with us. Not to come and lie up with us. Not to come and watch TV with us. Not to come and watch a soccer match or a baseball match with us. No. He sent his only son to come and do it. To come and die for our sins. That was the only reason why you sent your only son to go and die for the sin of some persons. It's unimaginable, right? But that was what God did. He sent his only son to come and die for you and for me. What love could be greater than that? What love could be greater than someone sending his only son? He doesn't have another one. That was the only one he had. And he was ready to do what? To sacrifice him. Just not for himself. You know, if you were doing something that you were going to benefit from, it's another thing in that day. But God had nothing to benefit from us. What is it that you want to give to God? You want to write him a check of $2 million? Well, if you could write it, come and give it to me, I'll give it to you. <laughs> when you write a check, just come and give it to me. Just tell me, hey, Father, this is, what, this is what God has. So you don't probably have the name of okay? <laughs> What do you want to give to God? You want to give him a house? You want to give him a car? Absolutely not. God does not need anything from us. He doesn't. All it is from us is our worship. All it is from us is for us to serve Him. All it is from us is for us to acknowledge Him as 
the Lord and God. God is only needed for us. He doesn't need anything. Just imagine saying that God doesn't need anything from me. Just to say thank you, God. That's all he needs. He said, He only needs our praises. And he even says in the book of Ezekiel, he said, even if you refuse to praise me, I will what? I will raise up stones, I will praise me. So it's not the case that God is lacking anything. He doesn't lack anything. And yet, the fact that he doesn't need anything from us, he still decided to send his son to die for us. I think so moment you just need to sit down and reflect on how much God loves me and I am. You know, when you reflect on how great that God is, we would not want to hurt someone who loves us like him. Someone who will sacrifice his son just because he wants to redeem you. Just because he wants you to know that he wants you to come and grow with him forever. That love is so great. And how do we repay him? We do not repay him well if we fall into sin again. No. We don't repay God if we fall into sin and then we choose a life of sin over and over again. We don't repay God. God is not happy. Because it will be like we are ungrateful people. You don't want to do something for someone and then instead of the person saying thank you, it's like, what did you do that special? How would you feel? You're going out of your way to hurt someone. And instead of the person saying thank you, the person is making you feel as if you've done nothing. You don't feel bad, right? So that's how at times we make God feel when we choose to sin. We make him feel as if he has done nothing special. Because he did something special. He sacrificed his son. And so today in Easter, we are celebrating that love of God. So now we are celebrating that power that God has given to you and I to know that we are what? We are victorious over sin. We are celebrating that power that God has given you and I to show us that our death is not for nothing anymore. But now we have died in order to be able to live with Christ. And that is why St. Paul, in his second reading of today, in his letter to the Colossians, he said, If then you were raised with Christ, that if we all have been raised with Christ, what should we do? We should seek the things that are above. Righteousness, humility, simplicity, love, faith, kindness, gentleness. These are the things that are above. Not money, not cars, not uh, houses, not clothes, not jewelry, not shoes. Those are the things that are beneath. We should seek what? The things that are above. Things that will make us to be united with God. And so Easter is a time where we need to draw closer to God in faith, in love, in hope, in charity, in kindness, in gentleness, in humility, in simplicity. That is what we should do in Easter, to draw closer to God. We should ask yourself, how can I be more humble? How can I be more gentle? How can I be more simple? The whole self should be a thing of fact. Oh, if you know you're expressing that you react so fast to something, you have that uh, uh, temper issue. Now that you have been raised up with life, the question is how can I be a better person? How can I be a more patient person? How can I, can I be a more loving person? How can I be a more gentle person? How can I be a, a, a kind person? How can I be a caring person? How can I serve God more? These are the questions that we are called to reflect on as we celebrate Easter today. Easter is a time of new beginnings. Easter, Easter is a time of fresh starts. We have been given that fresh start by God. And so we need to embrace it with our whole heart. We need to embrace this new life by making sure that we become new beings, by making sure that we become new persons. But let me show that we know that we are the resurrection people. And hallelujah is our soul. And so today we pray that as we celebrate this Easter, that God in his infinite love and mercy will transform the darkness of our lives and lead us joyfully into his kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
In the place of the creed, we will rise to renew our baptismal promises. We have been given a candle at the beginning of the Mass. For those of us who probably will not be able to have one, just follow the laws in faith. So we are going to light our candle from the Paschal candle. We will go and then we will spread it back to everybody who has a candle in their hands. Uh, for those of those who don't have, just let us follow you up in faith. We just have, uh, I don't know what happened, but we ran out of candles this morning. We used them yesterday night. But if you have someone close to you with a candle, you just share with the person, okay? Just share with the person close to you with a candle. So um, we'll light the candle, and then we'll have a renewal of our baptismal promises like you did at our baptism. Then after the renewal, we will sprinkle on us the holy water that has been blessed yesterday, just to remind us of our baptism. Okay? So while the sprinkler is going on, the fire will lead us in the sun, just like it did yesterday night. No, don't find the candle, don't find it. No, please switch off the candle. Switch off the candle. No, we are going to put our light on the pastor candle. Okay. Yeah, so put off that candle. Okay, thank you. We're gonna, we'll, I will on it on the pastor candle and then we'll spread it around. Okay? We're not going to use the lighting. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, through the pastoral mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. And the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord, 
all eat and all die. Amen. Amen. So we can have sprinkle the holy water on us by the body of the Son.
Studio Jack Paul, most merciful body. For many humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. That you are sent and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices. Which we offer you firstly for the Holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to that united and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servants Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, Peter Louis Auxiliary, and all those who hold it to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all that are here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves. And all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, a hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious heaven Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph is Christ, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and William, and all the saints. We ask that through your merits and praise, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting God. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also, for those whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, grant to them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace. And command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flood of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and accepted, so that in daily comfort, the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given by. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, 
the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. Be your servants and your holy people, up unto your glorious majesty from the heat that you have given us. This be your beta, this holy beta, this spotless beta, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of the servants, even of the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of the high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, as spotless as In our prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, the man that is your gift be born by the hands of your holy angel. To your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of the Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us for a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of grace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. So house also your servants who will see us, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some cheer and fellowship with your holy apostles and masses, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Macedonius, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Carmen, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, and meet us to beseech you into your company, not laying our merits, but granting us your power. Through whom we continue to make all these good things O Lord, we sanctify them, fill them with life, and bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Fear ye will take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity. And in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 Can you give him the louder? Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you for the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. And now that the days of the lost passion have come to a close, may you will celebrate the gladness of the gospel feast, armed with Christ's help and exalted in his spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Go forth. The Mass is ended. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.